September is one of my favorite times of the year. The mornings are so misty and moody, but the afternoons are still sunny and warm. It's so beautiful and peaceful. The busy cruising season is over, and it seems like we're pretty much the only ones still sailing around these parts. Most everyone else is gone south again before winter. We spent the past week here on Guilford Island. We were anchored in Echo Bay and pretty well ended up meeting everyone who lives in the community, which didn't take long seeing how there's less than 10 people here full time. We walked over to Proctor Bay this morning from Echo Bay, where we are visiting our friend Tony. She's staying in the cabin behind me here. Our friend Tony is actually working here for the season and is staying in a cottage in Proctor Bay. It isn't really a great anchorage, but we've been given permission to use the mooring ball here, so Uinta is safely tethered to the ocean floor. We've pretty well moved into this cottage with Tony the past few days. It's very rustic and super cozy. There's electricity, hot water, and Wi-Fi, so we've been thoroughly enjoying those simple luxuries. After a busy summer moving about, it's felt really good to be in one place for a full week. Tony's cat just had two little kittens, and they're absolutely adorable. We really enjoyed spending some slow time here and it's been the perfect way to spend the last few days of summer. Oh, and we got our hands on a crab pot, so we've been having fun trying to catch our dinners. We caught a red rock crab earlier today. Allison pulled him out from the deep He's about six inches wide, which is two inches bigger than legal size. So we're going to cook him up for lunch. He looks very similar to a Dungeness crab, although he's very, very red and has these black pointed nippers. Claws, the things that bite you. They're black on the tips, but apart from that, he looks uh, very tasty. Although he also looks very scared in the bucket. He was looking for a way to escape and he couldn't find one. And now he's just sitting there sulking. It's I don't know, do crabs have personalities? Or like, social habits? It doesn't make the guilt any easier. Job, boo. That's uh, that's what he looks like after he's cleaned out. He's um, much smaller than a Dungeness crab. He has big claws though. He has huge claws. These things are massive. I mean, that's a big red rock crab. So yeah, it's, they don't really get much bigger than this. So he's a good size red rock crab, but very, very um, substantially smaller than a Dungeness. Even though their shell is about the same size. He was six inches. The one we had the other day was six and a half but his actual body part is way, way smaller. Like his claws are bigger than his body. It's a very pretty crab. He cooks up very red and this salad is delicious. It's fresh herbs, tomato, cucumber, a little bit of leftover rice. Nothing better to accompany this beautiful red rock crab that we have. Bon appetit. Mm -hmm. Very fresh, very tasty.
Echo Bay Marina and Lodge at Kwakwaladi Village is an iconic place with a rich history. Currently owned and operated by the Kwakwaladi First Nation, it has the only store, post office, and fuel station for miles around. We set out to wander along the indigenous interpretive trail from Echo Bay to the ancient Kwakwaladi village site. Prior to colonial settlers, Kwakwakiwak peoples have lived and looked after the land here for thousands of years. Following the trail, we arrived at the ancient midden at the end of the bay, a white beach made from layers and layers of discarded shells. The remains of shellfish gathered and consumed here dating back to 10,000 years. Just up from the beach, the remnants of the old settler community school that for 46 years taught the English curriculum. The school saw its final class in 2008 and was demolished just a decade ago in 2014. But now the time has come to move the boat from Echo Bay around the corner to Proctor Bay where we're going to go meet up with a mate of ours. The next day, we jetted off with some awesome folks from nearby Salmon Coast Research Station. A 20 mile ride through Tribune Channel towards beautiful Bond Sound, one of the last remaining unlocked watersheds in the area. We suited up and hiked into the Ottawa River in search of the lifeblood of the BC coast. These folks are known as creek walkers. Every year in autumn, they scour countless waterways, counting salmon, that return to their natal streams. They are conservation's essential window into the salmon runs. If not for these grassroots monitoring programs, the status of wild salmon is at best a guess. And with declining numbers, their work is more important than ever. Five species of Pacific salmon thrive in the North Pacific waters, and all five can be found here. Salmon are anadromous, meaning they begin their lives in fresh water and then migrate to the ocean. After years at sea, a biological clock tells them it's time to return to the place of their birth, to spawn a new generation and die. Their annual migrations are a miracle of nature, and every fall, thousands of animals gather in tidal waters, estuaries, and rivers to feast. The salmon's marine-rich nutrients then return to the land where they were born. Directly or indirectly, all life on this coast owes its existence to the rhythmic life cycle of wild salmon. Smells delicious. Lost one. Do you want to tell the people your hot pancake tip? Make your pancakes with yeast and whole wheat flour. So they rise nicely and they have a nice chewy, lovely texture rather than the other types of pancakes just that just immediately fall apart. Although 
they are much stickier and they can be a little bit harder to spread out in the pan. We only eat pancakes when we have fresh berries and there's heaps of blackberries and blueberries around right now. So we are feasting on pancakes. We've also run out of eggs, so. Pancakes it is. Yeah. <laughs> the plan is to jam as many berries into a pancake as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And then you don't even need to put maple syrup on it, but you still should. <laughs> This simple, quaint, off-grid place is really something special. So far removed from the hectic, fast-paced world that so many of us are accustomed to, this place knows no busy schedules or distractions. It knows the rhythm of the seasons, the return of the salmon, the ebb and flow of the tide. Our daily routines here have fallen into their own slow and steady rhythms. <laughs> so. uh, no crabs for dinner. Sorry. Okay, at least the view is nice. Yeah. Um, a good excuse to walk over here. We've really made ourselves at home, and honestly, I could see us becoming permanent residents here. Maybe someday.